In this lesson, we'll plot out the path for our snake creatures animation. So we have our snake guy here, and I have the environment uh, created on a layer. Again, this is just kind of a, a little a domey shaped place. I have a, a roof as well, which I'll bring in. That's just hidden right now, so I can see what's going on. But this is going to be kind of just the uh, the environment on which our snake is going to move, or around which I should say. And as you can see, our snake is like buried right here in the middle. So uh, let's go to the uh, outliner here and open this up and find the global move node for him. So here's our snake node, and I'm going to open it up and go to the global move, so I can just kind of um, move the entire the entire guy. Uh, and I'm going to have him kind of over here and have him um, probably like, you know, I'll move him over here a little bit, and I'll have him zigzag through this little area here, then kind of leap us, leap over top. Uh, at the camera here. I want this to be, you know, this is going to be a fairly quick animation in terms of the overall timing of it. Uh, we're not going to go, you know, it's not going to be telling the entire story here, so we're just going to uh, see how this little rig can work. So I'm going to go to the global move. I'm going to scale this guy up a little bit because he's a little bit small for this scene. So maybe 1.4 out of the scale just to kind of make him feel a little bit bigger. Maybe 1.6. There you go. All right, so I just want to have him be big enough. You know what? Let's make him twice the size. That looks pretty good. All right. So what I want to do first is figure out the timing of where he is, where he's going to be going, and how he's going to get there. All right. Now, a lot of people will just kind of, um, you know, pose, go pose to pose and, or, you know, or plan it out like that. Uh, I, I tend to just want to use a primitive shape and animate that primitive shape and kind of get a feel for timing that way. So I'm going to just create a NURBS sphere really quickly and bring this guy over here. This is going to basically stand in for our snake's movement. Obviously, it's not going to stand in for the snake itself because it's a sphere and our snakes tend to be a little more cylindrical, but, but this will, uh, this will kind of get us started in terms of just in terms of how quickly things will move. So what I want to do really is I want to have this video be about 100 frames, so about you know a little 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 bit over four seconds. And I just wanted to kind of give us the the ability to see the snake slithering and, and then striking. So uh, I'm going to have this right here. This is going to be kind of like you know where it's going to start from. So really quickly I'm going to just go to frame one and grab this little guy and hit S to keep him everything and for like the first 10 frames this is just going to be he's not going to be slithering yet he's just going to be kind of you know like rearing his head essentially um, which can largely happen without the, the need to, for us to uh, even move any of these 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 uh, clusters he's just going to pause for maybe like five frames really quickly so I'm just going to pause it there so basically we just have him arching up for like a brief pause, like the, the briefest of pauses, like five frames, like really, really brief. <laughs> and then we're going to have him basically slither back and forth and then strike. So I'm going to go to where I want him to strike, probably around, again, even this might be too long, so I want this to kind of, you know, be a, a quick strike here. So I'm going to make his pause a hint longer. And then the slither, I'm going to hit play. So maybe around the 40, 45 or 50 or so, um, he'll be at the end of his little slithery thing. So I'm going to go to frame 50 and bring this sphere to where I want him to be at the end of his little slithery forward movement, something like so. Once again, I'll just hit S to make sure everything is keyframed. So now I have this straight line here, and of course I want him to be a little bit more slithery here. So if I'm going to go to it's eight, it's frame 18, let's make this um, frame 53 so that we have like uh, 35 frames and I'm going to go about seven frames here and have him go a little bit to the left and then seven more frames more toward the right seven more frames more toward the left um, and then seven more frames more toward the right and then so it's going to be like going slither 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 and then come up right so this last one here I'll just move it a little bit forward Actually, let me make sure on frame 47, I hit S to make sure that all the all the uh, translations were saved so that when I move him up a little bit, I'll only be affecting this keyframe. Now, also keep in mind that by default, uh, more often than not, this is going to be a an ease in, ease out motion. And I don't really want that in this case. I want this to be kind of quick. So I'm going to go to my graph editor and just go to my, my translations here. Hit the F key to frame it up and just make, I want to make this fairly linear. Um, doesn't need to be pretty, it just needs to be accurate in this sense because again this is just a placeholder. But so it's, it's going to go up, 
zing, 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 and then attack, right? So if I hit play, it's actually slower than I would ordinarily do it, but I'm actually okay with that in this case because, you know, for the sake of demonstration, we can be a little bit slow here. This initial movement, though, when he kind of pops his head up, this is very, very slow. So I'm going to move everything back from t frame 10 on. I'm going to hold down Shift, click and drag over the whole thing, and then middle mouse drag this back a little bit. So this initial zoom, zoom, zoom and then come up. And this last part here where he jumps up should be a little bit faster. All right, so this is where he is rearing up here. So I'm going to go about seven more frames and just kind of give this a little hint of a motion back. So like he's kind of rearing up to strike up and then strike, right? So slither. So I'm going to let him take a little bit, take a little bit more time here. So I'm going to move this a little further back. So he's zigzagging up. Strike and then boom. So right, right around frame 65 or so, I'm going to kind of have a little bit more of a of a you know of a of a tension there where you're kind of getting ready to strike, and then you know in in the space of maybe three frames or so, um, he'll just strike at the camera. Yeah, so zoom. right. So basically, I'm just plotting out the movement of this sphere. And what I can do after this is um, create an animation path, a motion, an animatable motion path for this guy, and basically use that as a guide as to where my my little um, spine clusters are going to go, the ones that are going to plot the actual path. I'm going to turn off the environment layer for a second. I'm going to grab this sphere and come up here to I'm in my animation module. I'm going to come here to animate, and I'm going to come here to create editable motion trail. I'm going to go to my option box. I want to make sure that uh, the time range is going to be from start to end because it's not doesn't take the entire time slider. It's going to go to maybe frame 70 or so. So let's go to end frame 70. Uh, increment 1. That's fine. Let's hit create motion trail. And as you can see now, we have this little path that's showing us where the major movements are. And I can use this path as basically a guide as to where to put my major um, spine clusters to plot out the path of the motion curve. Okay, So this was really just about plotting out the timing um, and figuring out where things are going to be happening. Uh, and Again, I use a primitive shape more often than not just because uh, it's an easier way for me to get a feel for how things uh, look. So in the next lesson, we're going to actually start plotting out the, the snake's movement itself uh, and seeing how that fits in with our environment and we'll make any changes we need to make along the way. Okay, I'll see you then.